you know, that's the way they've been coached by Coach D'Antonio. He's, a, he's usually a, a, a move-forward kind of guy. He doesn't really look behind all that often. He's a, you know, a positive guy for the most So that's the way they're, the way they're acting. They're, uh, you know, he's still coaching them, so he's not there because they've, he's trained them that well. Mm-hmm. Do you think he'll be on the cell phone or anything like that on Saturday watching from home? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think uh, from the sounds of it, his wife's not letting that kind of thing that kind of thing go on. In fact, it hasn't even been decided if he's going to watch it in real time yet. He may he may DVR it and then and then oh. watch it, you know, a little bit later so that he's not you know into it on a you know I guess so he doesn't want to grab the phone and and make a call or something. So uh, they haven't decided that for sure yet. I think that's going to be really his wife Becky's call. She's, mm kind of in charge the the whole staff went over there the other day um in fact yesterday and uh and visited him and uh there, there wasn't a whole lot of football talk just because uh you know they don't want to get him going on a game plan or anything that like that they really want him to just relax and get healthy and hmm. heal and the whole thing still i can't imagine he he has a watch he knows when it's noon and he knows when it's saturday and if even if he's not looking at his clock a guy like that has a body clock for saturdays in the fall and they, they may not want him to watch from 12 to 3. I don't know if it would be worse for him not to know what's going on or to know what's going on. Probably a good point. I, I would imagine they'll decide and just let him watch it, and, and they'll watch him and, and, yeah. uh, you know, and you know, keep, him from, keep him away from phones and stuff. But he'll, I'm sure he'll watch it and be involved and, and uh, you know, do his best to, uh, do his best to you know, not grab the phone and try to act like he has headphones on. <laughs> Having said that, I mean, the Spartans shouldn't have any trouble with this team, Northern Colorado. It should be a walk in the park, shouldn't it? Well, it, they should win, that's for sure, just because it's a, you know, a one double A school compared to being a Division one school. So they should have an advantage in size and quickness and better athletes and more athletes. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, you know, that's not always a guarantee, and this is one of the highest scoring teams in Division one double A, and, and those upsets happen all the time. Michigan had a really tough time with Massachusetts last week. And, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, those upsets are out there because those kids are on scholarship, too. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a walk in the park, but, uh, but they should win. Vikings at 0-2, Lions at 0-2. Nobody probably expected that, especially Brett Favre. Uh, is, is, <laughs> it's, it's tough times in Minnesota, isn't it? They must be about to push the panic button. Yeah, they're probably freaking a little bit, but, it's, you know, it's a really long football season, so I would think they'll... They'll relax. They're gonna. They're playing at home. I'm. I'm sure they. They figure. You know. They'll. They'll get one going this week, and you know they can win two in a row and be back to two and two, and be right back in the division. Hmm. Well, we will see you at the game Saturday. Read you in the Grand Rapids Press. The great Greg Johnson from Grand Rapids Press.